response to the 2019 general elections on independent television, we have, well, we're starting today, the road to 2019. Just to keep you abreast and updated with all the latest happenings on the road to 2019 and help you take action. You have a responsibility to make that election be as peaceful as possible. Well, it's the maiden edition of Road to 2019 on independent television, specifically on all our satellite channels, on Go TV channel 107, Star Times channel 130. If you're in UK, America, and other parts of Africa, you can also watch us on Roku TV and several other platforms. But on the road to 2019, Professor Mahmoud Yakubu, the chairman of Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has called for close collaboration between the electoral body and broadcasting organization of Nigeria, BAN, in voter education ahead of the 2019 general elections. The INEC boss disclosed this at the keynote speaker at the 69th BAN Annual General Assembly in Lekki, Lagos. Speaking on the topic broadcasting in the 2019 election, Professor Yakubu described the media as the cornerstone of democracy, noting that they play a critical role in the proper functioning of a democratic system. And still on the road to 2019, the incumbent deputy governor of Ikiti State, Professor Kolakbo Olushola, emerged candidate of the People's Democratic Party for the Ikiti State governorship election scheduled to hold on July 14, 2018. Lushola defeated his rival and former Minister of State for Works, Dayo Adeye, to emerge winner in the governorship election primary for the PDP. We're looking forward to see how he can turn his election victory at the primary into the uh, election victory proper. And this is huge. Still on the road to 2019, the leadership of a political pressure group founded by former President Ulysse Gouba the Coalition for Nigerian Movement, CNM, Thursday, yesterday, announced its fusion into African Democratic Congress, ADC. It was resolved that with the understanding of like-minded persons and organizations across the country, Nigeria will be rescued and that the elections of 2018 and 2019 will be used to cure the curse and afflictions of failed leadership and perpetual underdevelopment. A co uh, convener of CNN Prince Olagunsei Unilola, who made the pronouncement at a World Press Conference in Abuja, said, with this development, the Coalition for Nigeria Movement has ceased to exist, having formally collapsed into the political party. Of course, earlier, before that event took place, Prince Olagunsei when Lola uh, also uh, resigned from the ruling of Progressives Congress. You remember, it was a part of parcel of the famous letter by the new PDP that was written to the APC to give some conditions uh, upon which, failing which they will take a decision. I wouldn't know if probably has taken a decision along that line. But just to let you know that on the road to 2019 election, INIC is making a projection of 80 million registered voters, and then, of course, uh, expecting 68 political parties to also participate. ANEC is expected to conduct 1,558 conduct elections into 1,558 constituencies, and that includes one federal, that is the presidential election, 29 uh, gubernatorial elections, 109 senatorial elections, 360 federal House of Representatives election, uh, 991 state constituencies, and 68 chairmanship and councillorship constituencies in the federal capital territory. That's what's up with uh, the road to 2019. Today, on the program, our focus will be INEC and the challenge of campaigns by political parties outside the 90 days are stipulated by the Electoral Act. I'm joined in the studio by two legal practitioners. I'd like to welcome very specially Barrister President Agboha, Barrister President Agboha, 
is Executive Director of uh, Information Counselors. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. We also have with us in the studio another legal practitioner, Barrister Sonny Daudu. Many thanks for joining us on the program. Thank you very much. Well, uh, we're expecting Barrister West Idaosa, is a former member of the National Assembly, to join this conversation via telephone much later. Gentlemen, thank you so much for coming on the meeting edition of the program, Road to 2019. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, now let's look at one of the stories that really struck my attention is the appeal by the INEC chairman that he needs to partner with the media to be able to make impact in terms of voter registration. And he also specifically said that he's disturbed by the fact that uh, there's so much voter apathy in, the, in Nigeria elections. What do you think is responsible for that, Mr. President? Basically, uh, election, foundation of every election uh, starts with uh, uh, sensitization, and that's civic for the media. Okay. The media need to let the people know those who are contesting and what the policies and programs are. Uh, the general party from the electorate, from the citizens, because the promises have not been met. The worst dash is that the last, we just elected uh, uh, president of the country when he was going there, informed the youth, which form over 60% of the electorate, who will be paying them, and uh, so many promises. Those promises uh, were dashed. Okay. So the youth, who form bulk of the uh, the, the voting population yes, are very scared and uh, quite surprised, still amazed, and still wanting the present government to actually fulfill their promise. So that's the fulcrum of uh, the voters' uh, empathy, empathy rather. They cannot uh, be expected to be coming out regularly and uh, promises are well, well, this is not restricted to the present administration. I mean, in yeah, previous in elections past, over the years. Generally, yes. in time past, but yeah. this has the worst because they have very good policies and program, and not they have not even able to implement close to 20% of it. Okay. And they, they won on a platform of promises. Mm. So these promises have not been met, and their party is very high. And you, if you do a statistics of those who are interested in voting now, or like before, go ahead and even know an average election. The person who won was like as if he was contesting for a senatorial election. Mm. So the interest is going down day by day, and it is actually tied to the promises expected and disappointed. All right, uh, Barrister Daudi, you share the same sentiments on voter apathy. Yeah, yes, I, I, I'm with him. But, but let me quickly uh, say this. You see, the media is an integral part of any political development of any country. So anybody, establishment organizations, especially INEC, cannot do without the media. Because, of course, if the media is not carried along, it's not in collaboration with INEC, the activities of INEC will not be known to the citizens of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. So, the media is fulcrum, is an integral part of elections, political development, political awareness, political education, political sensitization. So, you cannot do without it. So, saying that he wants to collaborate with the media is saying the obvious. So, you cannot do without the media. Now, when you now look at the political party, I will agree with him that uh, in view of the fact that the present government or previous government have not been able to meet the needs and aspirations of the people, especially that of the youth, also speaks volumes of the apathy. I agree totally. There is no incentive. But it goes beyond that. It goes beyond that. The reason is clear. You see, the issue of political parties in Nigeria or party system in Nigeria is that once you have won elections, they go back and that is all. The party doesn't now go back home to get feedbacks from the people, from the people okay. to know how well the party in power is spending or how well the people are benefiting from the policies and programs of the party. You see, the problem we have in Nigeria, I have said, is political parties and those gladiators, those who control the machineries of politics. Once a, a person wins, the government takes over. The party goes to sleep. We do not have party supremacy. In a situation where we have party supremacy and party sensitivity, what is normally done is that the party, especially the party in power, engages the people, fills the pulse of the people, and report to the government. The government only clarifies the air on its policies, how far I have implemented the programs of this party. But the party itself ought to, at all times and purposes, because party is organized by, from the unit level, from the world level, yeah. from the local government level, district level, senatorial level, just like that. Okay. Before you come to the state, yeah. when you now talk about zonal offices, now national. Yeah. 
This is designed so that we could have the pulse of the people even from the interior. Okay. But what we have situations that once we win, the parties go to sleep. The policies of the parties are not being implemented. The party is not is now is now go afraid to go back to the people because the people will now demand from them explanations. Okay. So when you look at this, people are not really now more interested of what is happening because even the party themselves does it go back to the people to educate them. And if I want to further that, sir, which is not even party or part of any political party manifesto or program or policy, is that party ordinarily ought to have what we call a policy designed to ensure that there are political education okay. through seminars, through workshops, and through conferences. All of this is to ensure that the party at all time and purposes engage the people on how the party in power is feeding. And even those in opposition also need to engage the people to tell the people that, look, believe now more on us because the, pa the party in power no, has not been able, to, not been able to do ABC that they promised. This is the policy they promised. Okay. So, okay. The party need to do more. Okay, let me let me, let me pause you there. Okay, and just take us through um, another very important issue that we raised a while ago on the road to 2019. Uh, for a long time, for some months, maybe weeks, uh, this story was uh, a major story in uh, national media, uh, talking about former president Ulusi Gumabasunjo. Of course, we remember his famous letter to the president. We also remember some of the criticisms and all of that, then, of course, we started hearing that, well, there is a coalition going on. Just Thursday was the announcement that the coalition has finally um, joined ADM, okay? Now, ADC. A a a okay, ADC. Now, what does this portend for uh, the 2019? A against the background of some of the things that uh, the former president has said, you know, in terms of what he feels differently about the present administration, the ruling party, and the issues on the ground. Uh, the party, to a large extent, is relatively unknown. Is not that something that uh, should worry them ahead of 2019, Barrister President? G generally, uh, Chief Olusha Gobasi, the former president of Nigeria, is very skilled in politics and also in governance. He's not a novice. Uh, coming at this time, it can never be too late. And it's a general uh, prayer point now that uh, my ambassador will not write me a letter. <laughs> and I'm sure a time will also come, will also be a prayer point that my ambassador will not join another party. But now that it's in ADC, I, I think uh, they have something in the offing. And it can never be, uh, it can never be taken for granted, mm. particularly those serious-minded political elites. But bringing it home, uh, structure is used to structure formation of party, and most importantly, party funding. Okay. Uh, so it has the reach of such uh, expenditure to get whatever it wants. Okay. But basically, uh, elector electorates are now very wise. Beyond all this, they want to know who his candidate is, what is the program, and what is the policy. And also quite a uh, parochial, where is the candidate coming from? Is it from the north, from the south, from the west, or from the east? What is his profile? What is his background check? Is he one of those uh, touts that have had office before? So those are the factors that will count for his party, not necessarily the timing. The timing is, is if you need a compared to the result he can get. If he gets the right person, the right funding, the right formation, and maybe the right policies and program. Uh, is timing inconsequential in this uh, new coalition that we, we've just seen? Remember also that uh, Prince Olagun Soye Onyilola uh, recently resigned from the ruling party, but he was part of the NPD, uh, NPDP, as they were called then, that moved out of the PDP just before the 2015 general election. And recently, they also wrote a letter complaining that, you know, since joining the ruling party, they've been sidelined and that they needed that to be given attention. But finally, he has moved out now. So what, what does this portend for this new coalition? Yeah, thank, thank you very much. As President has said, timing is not an issue now. Even if you remember that, if you go by the electoral law, is 90 days they need that three months. So this is coming for a year. So it's home and dry. The party is home and dry. Now don't forget it's a coalition of political existing political parties and organizations, institutions, establishments. So the issue that is new does not exist. The persons who are forming the coalition are grassrooted. And don't also forget that even a day to election, some people can decamp just to vote out a government that they feel is not doing well. So the timing is not an issue. The structure is not an issue. 
because the various political parties now, they are going to have crisis. Why would they have crisis? Some of them are going to do their Congress now. There will be a fallout of that Congress. So I'm going to do primary elections. There will be fallout of that primary election. And they will be seeking comfort. In this Seeking relevance in, in the other ones. Okay. So it is the same politicians who are going to move. There will be a massive, just watch out. There will be a massive movement from all political parties now to align with this ADC. Because if you look at, I'm not going to expose now the programs and policies of, because if you look at the concept, it's Africa Democratic Congress. Africa is its contest. Because Africa is the centerpiece of Nigeria for the policy. And having identified with that, people should be worried now. Any party in power, at that state level, local government level, should tighten their bed to ensure that they are able to negative the strength of this party. If you don't do that now, yeah. you think it's a young political party, yeah. it could bring a spring. And when it does that, so persons will not be happy with it. All right, so thanks. the party is on ground. People are on ground. They are yeah. just waiting for the, for, for the virtuality to happen. All right, so we'll, we'll keep our fingers crossed and see how that manifests as we go on the road to 2019. If you just join us, it's a new program, Road to 2019 focusing on all the issues leading or heralding the 2019 general election. Of course, you remember I said at the beginning that we have about 10 months, approximately 10 months to the election. A major talking point today is INEC and campaigns by political parties outside the 90 days before election are stipulated in the Electoral Act. We also will be having a former member of the House of Representatives, two-time member House of Representatives, Barrister West Idaosa joining us live from Abuja via telephone in the course of the program. But let's get on with uh, our barristers here, Barrister President Agbo and of course, Barrister Sonny Daoud. Gentlemen, once again, thank you for joining us on the program. Thank, thank you. you. We're privileged. Okay, what's the position of the Electoral uh, Act as it relates to campaign? We know it's got to be 90 days before the election proper. What's your take in terms of adherence to this? Because of what we're seeing today. It's important we also define what the campaign is and we know what the provisions are before we go to talk of the adherence. A campaign is public show of programs, policy, and candidates to the public or to some persons of what the candidates may do when they get into public office. By Section 93 of the Electoral Act, you have 90 days to the election to do a public campaign. It therefore, means that private campaign can almost be forever. <laughs> what are the characteristics of these campaigns? What differences a public campaign from a, pri a private campaign? Public campaign is the one you hold in a public schools. Uh, women, everybody is there with the signage of the party or whatever. But I think a, public, a private campaign will be the one you start meeting stakeholders, tell them what you want to do and all that. The law on the regulation on campaign is very loose and it's not tightened enough to guarantee any conviction either civil or criminal. The law is very liberal on campaign. So campaign in Nigeria can actually go unended. What is more important, therefore, is the funding of the campaign. The law also stipulates that funding for election for a governor is 200 million, and for a president is 1 billion, and for us as every member is 10 million. And the also the law, while defining what an expenses is for election, started to count from the period where the person has been given a ticket to the election period. And that's quite surprising. And also the third element is that the, the, the Electoral Act mandates only the, the party to give reports to the institution as per, as per spending. It therefore means that the spending within the period as an aspirant to the electorate is not accounted for and held liable it's, it's by not the captured. law. It's not captured under by the, the law. law. So expenses in that period of as well as every whatever can be whatever amount. So those gaps have not be closed. But that also moves up to campaign online, which is a new trend. Yeah. There's, there's a candidate who is online now getting money from the national sources to come and contest for president in Nigeria. The, there's no law that captures him. But there's a section which says that donation, donation outside Nigeria, that is more than one million, you must give, give out the name, the details of the person. An unauthorized donation, an unidentified donation above 100,000 100, naira, mm. The person, the person is donated to be held liable. But strangely, why in the conviction part of the law, it has the party accountable for any donation 
privately or publicly. So therefore, campaign is liberalized and parties are only held liable, not the candidates. Uh, but Mr. Daudu, um, uh, is INEC, for example, uh, handicapped in dealing with the issue of campaigns, either uh, like by the president, um, uh, you know, categorized public or private, as it were, and then, of course, the issue of funding. Is INEC handicapped in, in dealing with this? Uh, of course, uh, INEC is handicapped. Uh, the law is actually loose. I look at the provisions of the law. And uh, if I'm able a little digress, the political parties in Nigeria are not even doing enough to set aside the people about their existence immediately after elections. So to me, they are not, uh, there are no really good campaigns that uh, either the law can hold any political party responsible for as far as I'm concerned. Because to me, they are not even doing enough to let the people know about how well they have implemented their program. Now, when you look at funding, when you look at the provisions of the law, the law tend to even close its eyes to prelude to the ticket. If you look at the provisions of the law, it starts counting even the 10 billion and all of that, the several amounts of amount money, like 10 billion million for House of Assembly. It says after the ticket has been given to you. What happened before the ticket? That is where the problem is. How to get the ticket from the, from the party? <laughs> Lobbying, <laughs> campaigns, Go around the whole world. I have involved in uh, some grassroots some, elections. And I all. know what it takes, sir. Even a local government election where you have to go around 11 wards to go and see the world executives. You will see them more than. What I mean by see them, you, you can give them pure water, but it's taxing. Some of them are interiors. You have to buy for it. You have to, see, you, no, the, 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 no law, no organization, not even INEC, can determine what a a person or a candidate spends on a election. Even the party itself also cannot determine what a candidate spends. Because at all time, my purpose is, if you are sitting down, maybe some colleagues come to stay with you, you are buying drinks for them to... Hey, 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 hey. So, you cannot... So, ANEC is radical. We cannot... Nobody can institute any action on any political party or a candidate that you have spent beyond the limit provided by law. Hmm. Even because the law itself gave a lot of gap to prelude to the primary election. Because primary election is where you get the ticket. Yeah. But there are activities, activism, horse trading, and all of that between then and primary. So you must have done your homework. I know a situation uh, previously where a political party has to house a number of persons in various hotels with trucks of vehicles. Take them from their various villages to their wards, to the state, and house them in hotels. Pay the bills for one week. They were eating free just because the party wanted them to vote for a particular candidate in the primaries. Those who are now captured, they are not captured in the, in, the, in the act. So what happens? So to me, the provisions that uh, restrict or designated some certain amount, one billion for president, ten million for, is just for the mere uh, city okay, let, let, let it me, doesn't really hold water okay let me let me push you there uh by yes. uh, does this in any way have implications for our democracy as it were because uh i remember in the u.s uh former president barack obama mm. was questioned about how some monies were were expended on uh, campaigns i mean you you dare not take campaign funds to do anything private you must account for all monies that you that that you know you received for campaign. So, within the context of Nigeria, what is the implication of these lacunas that we have in the laws, mm -hmm. and this lack of semi-regulation on how campaign funds come, and then of course not working within the 90 days duration? What is the implication? Yeah, the, the huge implication is on the market legitimacy space. The people who gets who gets into public office now cannot. Uh, really do much because they are indebted even before they are sworn in. They are so indebted that when they get into public office, they are not only trying to upset the debt, they are also very angry with everyone, those who didn't vote for them, including those that voted for them. An example for that is uh, the second tenure for the immediate past governor. Did very well in his tenure, first tenure. Second tenure, they make him dry. So he was wondering, this, I did say a lot for these people. So I'm coming back, you're asking for peanuts. So when he came back, I don't know, I don't want to assess him here, whether we paid them back uh, what they did to him. But that is the, that is the lot of the masses in a quest to make 
people who want to occupy governor space for free. Now, you spend so much in getting into public office, and if there are no law to regulate, whether there are law to regulate, it helps the candidates. Take, for instance, i give you a, a cognitive ex example of regulation of election spending. In, under the Nigeria Bar Association BA, you are not even allowed to print poster. You are not allowed to print sticker. You are allowed to send tests within a limited so period. So those who print posters so uh, uh, will be disqualified. Will be disqualified. Well, I've, I've been at the High Court several times. I, as, I, and I saw, you know, uh, I've seen posters. That should be like eight years ago. Yeah. Currently, for, for over five years now, nobody does that. It's banned. If you do it, you are banned disqualified. Now, it makes, it, it makes it cheap to get. You only get it on popularity. So that when you get there, there will be no much expectation. We will not be jostling to host, uh, or host an MBA conf host MBA conference or whatever so that you can get money from printing of bags and badges. So you are there to serve. So that is what governance should be. Governance should be, so, should be so liberalized and reduced and removed from marketplace to where you can actually do public good. Because those who actually invest in these things get contracts that they don't even do. And also, it's, it tells on public procurement. Because if I invest 50 million, you give me a contract of 40 million, you are still owing me 10 million. That means that job will not be done. So when you are talking about procurement, 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 it starts from, it starts from, from election, electionary uh, uh, financing. If electionary financing is cured, the right people will get to public space. Those who don't have money will get it. You won't have all these kind of persons acquired for public office because they have money. And there are a lot of people who are very good who can actually occupy this space, and there's, there's a lot they can do even at the grassroots level, but they would never get it because of the funding. And I tell you unconventionally, if you want to become a governor of a state now, you need not less than five billion to be given to a governor sitting. You give it to him by yourself that I want to contest. We will not try to help you. That is what is happening. People are aware. So we don't even think about it. Are you talking from experience? No, uh, we, I mean, uh, we are, we are aware. Are just <laughs> <laughs> you can't even think about it when you don't have such money or such sponsor. You get the point. So those who are there know what they spend. So when they get into public office and they see you around, they are not happy. You are lucky if they are doing their job. They are actually working for the, for the office of from which they have been elected. But in all, it is not in the benefit of governance in Nigeria. There is a research in the UK that high public spending helps governance. It makes serious minded people to come out. And what do they spend on? They spend in offices in their regions or grassroots. They spend in offices, furnish it, internet and everything. They spend in branding. But here, not, in, not much is spent in branding compared to what will be spent on the election day. They'll give people peanuts. And the spending in, pol in the required political office is quite, uh, it is re it's depend on the zone. It's, it's geographical. Yeah. What to spend in the north, not what to spend here. It's, it's even only in Nigeria politics that when you are budgeting, you budget for civil defense, you budget for police, you budget even for custom to make sure that people don't cross the bordering <laughs> state to your state. <laughs> that is strange. So the budget is so high that one begins to wonder if there is serious regulation and electionary financing, it helps the politician more than the people. Because it helps the politician to even save, and it helps the system in a way to get a real candidate that will not be in the marketplace, but in a place of service. Okay. Uh, Mr. Daudu, yeah, uh, uh, let's talk about the implications. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the implication strictly is that excessive spending in politics by political parties and candidates is that it works hardship for the citizens. The dividends of democracy and the yearnings and aspirations of the citizens are not met. You see, the, 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 for instance, let's even limit it to the 10 million for House of Assembly, for instance. It's not an easy money to come by. A person who either borrowed to get 10 million, let's even limit it to 10 million, for instance, for House of Assembly. He now goes there. What is the salary of a House of Assembly member? It's about 300,000. How multiply 300,000 for you to get 10 million? The man cannot work. He's now there to now ensure that either he pays back, if he's possible himself, or that he, is... Or he borrowed, he took a loan. He, or he took a loan, mm -hmm. in which case he must also have, oh, have some collateral securities. <laughs> or if he's sponsored by or some persons or groups, or what they call Godfather or Godfatherism, he needs to pay the $10 million back. How then does he govern? He cannot govern. The people cannot benefit. The citizens cannot benefit. So... This is a left bear after elections. That is why most of times they do it to the extent that they borrowed and share 500 for people to come and vote. After they have voted, they tell the people, we have already paid you what you need. So when you go to governors, don't expect anything from them. They will friends who you eat together. You can't go there and ask for any benefit. Because to him, he believes he has given you your own share. Your share is that he gave you 500 to come and vote for him. So why are you expecting him to do any other thing 
other than that. So he's ready either to quickly pay back the 10 million, if it is limited to 10 million, let's assume that for House of Assembly, for instance. And what then does he make? Because also, he will need to save to either get the ticket back for a second tenure, or at least to have where to fall back if he leaves the place. So the masses are left without no benefit. I was discussing with some, a student today who said he has, he has some uh, idea to do uh, a business. Yeah. But he does not have the funding. Okay. But government will say, oh, the, the students are not, or youth are not entrepreneurially skilled. Yeah. They have the, the skill. They have the knowledge. Okay. But they don't have the funding. A man who... Okay, let, let, let me pause you there. Uh, we have uh, Barrister West Idausa live with us from Abuja on the program. Barrister West, good evening and thank you for joining us. Thank you very much, my brother. How are you? We are good. We are good. How is Abuja? Not bad. Okay. Um, this is uh, quite interesting because uh, INEC is talking about partnering with media and other stakeholders to ensure that um, political parties work within the 90 days stipulated for election. But we're looking at the issue of uh, the campaigns before the 90 days, which seems to be a part and parcel of our electoral process. Uh, what do you make of this for a start? Well, you know that uh, the question of campaign is strictly regulated by INEC. And if you look at Section 100 of the Electoral Act, it's clearly that the INEC shall be uh, the one to determine the mode of campaign and what time campaigns shall commence. But whether they can enforce this strictly uh, is a difficult uh, thing to answer. But what I know is that there is uh, a punishment uh, clause for media outfits that do violate uh, the requirements of INEC. I know that, for example, um, once a media artist violates that, it's liable to be fined about 500,000 in the first instance, and it can get up to 1 million naira uh, in the second instance. And then, of course, the key offenders are also uh, liable to imprisonment. They can be uh, convicted uh, under the electoral offenses in miscellaneous positions. So I think that campaign issue is a serious matter, but it's difficult by the nature of regulation to really monitor uh, political parties as to whether they are violating uh, campaigns before the 90 days when the same allocated by ILEC. Well, well there are uh, specific sections of the Electoral Act that tends to give uh, a boundary above which uh, you can't spend for an election. Uh, some of my I mean, analysts here in the studio have also said that um, the, the electoral law uh, tends to open a lacuna, so to speak, in the sense that um, it, it does not take into cognizance that political parties spend money before the primaries. The, it tends to uh, start counting from when uh, someone you know, aspires for a position, goes for the primaries, and wins the ticket. That's where it starts counting from. W what do you make of this, uh, these inadequacies in our electoral act? Well, I think the whole idea is they are trying to give a level playing field uh, by trying to reckon with the period after the primaries have been match. They don't want to look at what happens uh, before the primaries because at that time it's intra party, it's largely an internal affairs of the party, and it's not the duty of INEC uh, to really deal with your internal affairs. Unless you invite INEC's attention uh, to uh, supervise either your internal conferences or your internal primaries. But the point I want to make is that there is need to review the things contained in the law. The reason is that beyond the fact that election expenses daily increase, there has been gross inflation in the country. The value of money is going down. And whether you like it or not, electoral processes will continue to involve money. People have to pay for advertisement. People have to pay for door-to-door uh, -to -door campaigners. People have to print campaign materials. People have to spend money on electronic advertisement, etc., and so on. So there is no way that those values will remain realistic. And once they are not realistic, you are going to push political parties to spend money on the ground much more than the ceiling. And the proof of expenditure is very difficult to come by. There's also a um, the 
party leaders and uh, the electorates also uh, have a fair share of this uh, blame in terms of making other aspirants or candidates to spend far more than they would have loved to spend in an election. Would you subscribe to this? I don't have no question about that. I mean, party leaders, of course, you know, they take aspirants to prepare financial resources. You heard of aspirants who sold their houses to be able to cope with the dictates of party leaders in order to get back the tickets. And then, of course, there is no question that many polling votes on election day, you've seen voters lining up conspicuously being paid money in order to vote. And this is all part of the election expenditure. And then you, you can sometimes see law enforcement agents looking and watching and condoning such portions of votes. So so long as our law enforcement agents we are not willing to do what they have to do, as long as uh, the electorate is prepared to collect money from politicians, they lose their moral high ground to challenge these politicians to do their duty in accordance with their vote of office, especially those who are elected. So I think there needs to be a holistic review of the electoral, uh, financial, Just before we let you go, Barrister Wesley Dahosa, uh, one of the uh, most topical issues is the recent coalition between uh, CNM, uh, founded by former President Lucia Gumo Basinjo, and uh, of course uh, Prince Olagun Soye Oyinlola, uh, ahead of the 2019 election. Uh, what does this point for uh, the forthcoming elections? Mr. West, it also, thank you so much for the useful insights you just brought to bear on Route to 2019 on ITV Benin. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you. Well, that has been a former member, three-time member of the National Assembly, Barrister West Idahosa, sharing some thoughts with us on the Road to 2019 on some key issues that we have talked about here in the studio. We hope that some other time he will be here live to join us in the conversations on the road to 2019. I've got uh, Barrister Sonny Daudu as well as Barrister President Agboha with me in our live studio here in Benin City. Gentlemen, once again, thank you so much for coming on the thank show. You. Thank you very much. Okay, you, you were I, making a point yes, here before we got that call. I was making a point, the disconnect between the political parties or those in the elected position and the people. Now, you spend a lot in getting to the office. Yeah. Now, instead of you to now have policies to assist the persons you are representing, your policies are towards either assisting those who voted for you, or I'm sorry, those who sponsored you, okay. or the organizations from which you borrowed the money. Now, as I was saying, I was chatting with a young graduate who had an idea of a business, but he doesn't have funding. Now, the government will say that we are not entrepreneurially driven. There are people who have the entrepreneurial skills, knowledge, and awareness, but they don't have the funding. The government, which of course cannot provide white collar jobs for everybody, need to, political, the political parties need to go into the villages. As I told you, parties are organized from the world. Go to the world. How many graduates do you have from this village? They are 10. How many graduates do you have here? You got about 20 of them. If I yearly, let it be part of your budgetary system for your local government or for your ward. If, for instance, I'm ward, from ward, a particular ward, yeah. ward A, for yeah. instance. Yeah. And I know that at least every year we have about two or three graduates from that ward. As you have a policy trust. So to that, deal with that issue. within the ward, okay. a policy trust. Okay. So that 
If government cannot employ them, which I know that government cannot employ all the person who graduated from my world, I should have a policy trust to assist them to fight for themselves immediately after graduation by way of empowering them after a, 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 a small training and let them go. If, for instance, you give some youths who are graduate 100,000, mm -hmm. they could start a business and sure. they will grow from there. Sure. These policies are not there. So there is no policy trust between those elected to represent them and the people. So there is a disconnect. The only policy trust is between them and their sponsors. So at the end of the day, what do you do? Do you do the people benefit? Nothing. Now, you will even see some elected members or till prior to elections now, they will be going home mm -hmm. to start campaign. The money they have saved. They want or, to spend it. Yeah, they don't want to spend it. You don't say, hey, this is no, yeah. that is not correct. Okay. Okay. Let me let me push you there. If you just join us, you're watching Road to 2019 on independent television. All our social media platforms are up and running. Uh, share a comment there. Uh, it'll be sure, uh, the rest of the show that will highlight it in the program. We also have our WhatsApp number. It's up there. Just let us know what you feel about all that we've talked about on the program today. We'll take a short break. Road to 2019. We'll be back in a moment. As the race for 2019 elections hats up, join Sonny Duke Okosan every Friday, 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. as he brings you profiles of key actors, insights, and in-depth analysis on the issues as they unfold on the road to 2019. The stage is set as the political gladiators try to outwit and maneuver their opponents in the politics or politics on the road to 2019 with Sonny Duke Okosan. Tune to ITV on Go TV Channel 107 and Star Times Channel 130 every Friday, 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Road to 2019 on ITV, a must watch. Thanks again for rejoining us on the Road to 2019 on ITV. Barrister Sonny Daudu and Barrister President Nag Bokhan are still with me live here in the studio. Gentlemen, once again, thank you for coming. Thank you. Uh, as we begin to uh, wind up the conversation on the program today, I just wanted to find out from you what you think of the role of the people in making uh, funding in the election very high, because that seems to be a critical aspect of this discussion. Uh, the people, the role of the people is to make it a disincentive to be accepting money for election. They should reject it for election. What also very important is that uh, I, I, I like to be practical. I want to give an instance where state election is run in local government and there is no much expenses. And that happens in, in a do state. It's a model of governance. The government, the central government, also already are aware that they spend a lot to get there. It tried to reduce the cost for local government personnel, for local government uh, office seekers, and they didn't spend much to get there. And that needs a cost rancor because we are not used to a model of governance. And uh, because I needed to comment on that and to also applaud this uh, discretion in doing that, elections should be cheap. And in doing that, we are all stakeholders. We can do it at our own level. As a, as a member of the NUJ, no poster. No SMS. Anybody wants to come and vote, come here and vote for anybody who will be able to approach you privately or you like. So governors will be very easy. So let us say, ah, because how do we make uh, governors uh, to desensitize the governance by costing it and all that? What would the people do? No. All of us have a role. Now, various association, no poster, no WhatsApp messages, come and we'll vote for you on that day. At the level of local government, cancel all. So this thing will go around. If governance is made cheap, it will, it, and it can work, like I've just cited now, it work in a, in a dusty local government. Mm. And it's a model for other states to copy. And I hope one day to go to the state, go to National Assembly, where persons can come and get office without spending much. You know that they didn't spend, but they, they, won't, they didn't spend as much as they would have spent if the election was the way it used to be. Mm. It's no longer business uh, as usual. And that model of governance is something that we must identify, uh, investigate, and applaud. All right, uh, Mr. Sonny, you'll be itching to say something along those lines. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Although I disagree with him on this call. Hmm. The reason that, although he has argued that uh, in the recent local government elections in the two states, there were no spending. 
and as such is a model. But he just made no, a no, reference to no, that. No, no, I want to, I want to say that yeah. he, he, he ought to have constitutionalized the incidents that happened. It's because the election were not clearly contested. Okay. If, okay. They were not contested. The PDP, which is the major opposition party, the, the state, by cutting the election. Who are you spending the election for? The election is to spend this, uh, is to convince the electorate to vote because they don't believe you are going to do anything for them after the elections. So are you in support of spending, as it were? No, no, no. Not necessarily that I am in support of spending. But how do you convince the people that I will not spend, I will get there? They won't believe you. If you now believe, because it's also difficult, sir. Let me tell you why it's difficult. Assuming my local government, I'm running for election, and I tell them that, look, no problem, I'm going to do good, I'm going to, you know me, I, have, I grew up from here, of you know me, I'm educated and all of that. They won't believe me if another candidate comes and be shedding money for them. The man brings bags of rice, salt, pepper. Then you will go there and speak English. They will just be laughing at you. Because spending of, political, of money is to convince the people. Not that I'm, I'm in support of it, but it wants to take a lot of political courage, political education, sensitization, and they must have seen that the government will do for them what they promise. So it, it's not enough to say we will not spend. You can have that in mind that you will not spend. But you may be outshined by a person who wants to spend. Because the real thing is that you convince the people that I'm going to do good by enticing them with money. So it is difficult. So the ESRC was citing in those states. It's not appropriate. It could only have been appropriate if the major if political parties... If party it was truly contested. were truly contested. Mm. They will now know whether both political parties will not have spent. Okay. On let that me, premise, then, of course, we will give let, it. Let me, let me get Barista Ibokan's reaction on this point. Because there's a, a, a very... A, a, there's a bullet point that he made that uh, spending helps to convince the electorates about your capacity to perform. Uh, do you subscribe to that? Uh, I, I agree with him on that, it is, it is, but it is an old notion. I've just given him a model. People are in offices now, they didn't spend much. That means it's possible to get into political office without spending much. This is not outside the observation that the election was not contested by the other party. If you say it not clearly contested, was it all the political party that boycotted it? You get the point. So this is not outside the context that the major party, uh, opposition party, did not contest. Okay. But assume, but if you look at the internal politics uh, pre pre preceding the, the election, it's discovered that there were some uh, comments that those who have heard of it before don't go near that place. Uh, you are not going to spend money much and all that. Those, those things were sounded hard even before the opposition, the uh, party, op the state opposition, voted out. So yeah. those are the signals. Send a signal to, to local government. Don't spend so much money because there's nothing there. You remember even when the commissioners were based on it, they were warned that those of you who are coming here, please, oh, there's no much money here. You get the point. So when they got into the office, they are not surprised. Those are what we need. It is, just keep on saying it. Keep saying it until it gets into our consciousness that you can get the political office without breaking banks. But also very important, those persons who spend money in election are, are always the third parties. They are not the candidates. They stay behind and spend the money. And you cannot even link the spending to the, to the person seeking office at times. So there should be a regulation that those persons, third party, have a, a, have a civil breach where you are sponsoring a candidate to get into public office by breaking the bank. Are you getting it now? And also very important, that party in itself should be accountable. There's a law say you send, audit, send your audit account to the, to the ANEC. How many individuals? coming to the individual now, have requested that a PDP, APC, what, where is your detailed account for 2015 election? We heard that some so person spent some so million in yeah. pretty t-shirts. Yeah. Um, what happened? APC, we heard that this did happen. Account for this. So the citizens have their own role. They must hold government to account for public spending in elections. The government has its own role to send a message, the civics, to the citizens. And to even the, uh, the, the, the elect politicians, don't spend so much money. There's no, there's no much to get here. Don't fight over who will be called local government chairman. There's no much to get there. I will yeah. gag you from Mr. David. So no need for you to go and borrow money. Yeah. So those are what you just send out. The government have their own role to play, to sensitize. I, isn't this what the Freedom of Information Act is supposed to make so easy to access? But from your experience, has that been yeah, the, the reality? The problem with, with the, the, the law is that the citizens are not even using it. The media, they only came and said media law, media law. How many journalists have used it? It's a clear case that even the Edozo government can actually be asked for 2015 period, what did you spend in the election by your books, even to the party? Your party can actually, act, can actually be held accountable by the law, benefiting from the, from the state treasury. 
they are not using it. You get the point. So citizens ought to use such law to tame spending in elections. So that, and that's what we have been doing. When, but the, the, the funny thing is that agencies don't answer our requests. Agencies don't answer. Government don't answer. So inevitably, you have to practically take them to court and perhaps expose them <laughs> for not complying with the law. But recently, the, the African Union Commission has is tried to put it as part of the obligation of states. Now, when you are making your report for state, you also let the, the, the states' heads know how you are complying with the law that you are signed. Okay. Uh, but, Mr. Dalgo, yes, um, on the final note, before we call it a wrap now, on um, this seeming, you know, um, debate, uh, you know, between you and uh, Bryce Tyre Eichbocher, particularly on the uh, role of the electoral, because that seems to be a very critical aspect of the funding. But then, of course, you talk about party leaders. Bryce West also made reference to that, that uh, leaders will literally see uh, that as an opportunity to amass wealth. If they had one house before, they get another one. They have two cars, probably get another one. They have one wife, probably marry an extra yeah. one. Yeah. You see, <coughs> politics in Nigeria is all evolving now. It's evolving. It's growing. But I still believe that you need money for political activism in Nigeria. There is no amount of any, I, I, as I was still say, I disagree with his, the model he cited. It's not an appropriate model for this issue. Because if I want to do that, I may take him a little far back. Whether he ca can he say the same in the governorship elections in 2016? He, ca he cannot say so. Where money not spent between the political parties. So using the local governments as it is, it's not a very suitable premise to argue that uh, the current government encourages less spending uh, get it to local positions. I agree that they didn't spend money because it was almost one-sided. So in such a case, who, who were they spending money for? Who would they spend the money for? Some areas, the candidates were not featured. So you can't spend money, for instance, if I contested for a ward election as a councillor, and nobody is contesting with me. Who am I going to give the money to, mm. to vote for me? I don't need a, you don't need vote. Um, let me also say this. Yeah. People were still going to vote. You don't need a vote. You don't vote. Where, for instance, you are the only candidate directly for an election. You don't need to vote. You don't need to cut vote for him. He's declared winner because he's running on a post. You don't need to print posters for him or print ballot papers for a candidate who is solely running a ward, a ward election. I'm from Ward A, for instance. And I'm the only candidate contesting. You are still printing ballot papers for me. You are just wasting government money to conduct elections. There were 18 local governments here. Several of the local government were not contested. And people were pretty bonus for those local government. It was also wasting uh, state funds or public funds, as the case may be. So, why I agree with him that the law, we should now channel the law to redirect political parties on their spending, I am looking at it as a regular tax to be achieved. Because candidates must spend money, either, even if it's not uh, much, you must spend money to move, to go around. Because when you are going around, you need some vehicles to follow you, authorize. You, assume you don't even give them money, you must wear those vehicles okay. to go around, to satisfy the people, to plead with the people, for the people. Even if you don't give them money, you need to drop some, even if it's a wine, five hundred dollar wine or two hundred dollar wine, you spend money, and you can't go once. If you go once, they will tell you oh, it's not contesting again. <laughs> so you continue to go and go and go. You know, you give, you may give, even if it's pure water, you continue to give the pure water and all okay. of that. So there, okay. are, there is spending. Okay. But what so, we are arguing is that so spending should be limited by law. Okay. And parties should be asked. I well, next should the, the law as it, as it is currently. Yes. Uh, it doesn't really help to limit spending. That's the point. Yes. That's the and, point. And yeah. the INEXA, yeah. they have a duty to write to e all political parties to forward their statement of accounts okay. on the spending on each election. INEX doesn't do this. All right. That's, that's where, uh, that's the much we can take on the program Road to 2019 on ITV Benin. I uh, hope you enjoyed it while it lasted. Big thanks to Barrister President Agboha and the Barrister Sonny Daudu. Uh, also, big thanks to Barrister West Idaosa, who joined us live via telephone from Abuja. This program comes up every Friday, 6 to 7. And of course, uh, all our platforms you can participate uh, up and running. We also have a WhatsApp number uh, that you can send a message to. Hopefully next week, Friday, 
it will be a lot better than what we did today because we're going to go in the ascendancy in improving what we're doing on the road to 2019. Big thanks to everyone that has made the program a huge success. Tony Etim, thank you very much. Um, Lucky or Morgwe, thank you very much. Of course, Ubedo uh, Bensei, thank you very much for all your big, big support. To my general manager, Senior Edda Ubedo, who will say thank you very much for all the support. My name is Sonny Duke Okosun. Thank you for staying with me on the program. See you next week, Friday, with a fresh edition. Bye for now.